madam this was one of the things which has been suggested in that cii report also of 2014 okay so i'll answer the second question first uh, now definitely uh, water ground water protection of aquifers i, I cannot uh, adequately emphasize the importance of it and it is a national state property etc one of the things proposals which people have been telling the government is that you should mandate only those by bore wells only from uh, the licensed bore wells etc so that you know the whole thing recharge of water is regulated and you know what is the you know you can also see how you can improve the uh, you know the the groundwater level etc so that is something which requires very very serious consideration of the policy maker across peninsular india it is not only you know it is in in north india where water levels are high etc they have, they, have, they get this snow feed snow melt in peninsular india that is not there and this problem exists in all the states today in india there are six states which have got a huge water problem that is karnataka maharashtra gujarat rajasthan punjab and haryana punjab and haryana is for overdraw etc but the other four states have got this problem what you mentioned this this merits serious consideration on this business of building on encroached land that is a universal thing in bangalore also one reason why i did didn't touch up on flooding is that will open a whole can of worms and somehow i am not uh, very uh, you know optimistic about it i'll tell you why you see the people the general builder class <coughs> who have built this they are the biggest contributors to the political process and what they have done is they are they are quite smart you take for example in karnataka there are three political formations and they make their donations 5 3 2 so that no major political formation gets left out of these donations it's that is why as a as a general rule the political class is very very reluctant to touch this issue the same issue was i remember 40 years back 30 years back there used to be the liquor lobby which was very powerful in karnataka there were no questions so far as the liquor lobby in the assembly there were no questions the liquor lobby nobody opposed the liquor lobby they will privately grumble or complain but in public not a word not a word because the liquor lobby ensured that everybody in the political process was taken care of therefore this is a very very huge problem but having said this there is one more thing see we are depending upon that building of encroached properties etc and the need to remove them and they are mighty and powerful people and issues of litigation and one of my future talks will be on administrative law and litigation so that i will try to share what are the pitfalls involved in all this 
in addition i think what we should look at is a comprehensive engineering solution is there some alternative thing whereby you can take up now and see that water is conveyed so that despite this you know encroachment this you don't touch those raj kalves but you touch something else you create a new conveyance of water is that possible <coughs> that engineering solution definitely merits consideration what you mentioned about you know uh, a, 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 a building on encroached land etc this is across urban india particularly in metropolitan cities across urban india and that is universally you know that is the problem but the very people who on whose houses are in those encroached areas who are suffering flooding they don't either they don't vote or they don't seem to bother there is only one language which the political class understands that is voting if you if an individual goes to a political person and say i have got this problem he or she may say okay i look into it if a group of people go they will say they'll ask them to sit down and explain if about 1000 people go with a signed petition they will come with you and they come let us do a spot inspection they will set aside time because they recognize numbers and how it can affect them so unless and until that is where your citizens welfare associations ward committees community involvement that is very very important see problems in brazil are the same of problems of indian polity etc 80 cities in brazil have got ward committees i have given the example of kerala you take nompen you take you know i have not given the example of you know success of rain water harvesting or reuse etc from either singapore or from an australian city sydney or brisbane or perth i have not given from germany i have not given orange county in california i have not given in south korea there are outstanding examples let us compare ourselves with some third world country nompen namibia windhoek or some place in Nam- namibia where a lot of work has been done these are the things we should benchmark ourselves and are we worse than those those countries so what are your views on the swachh bharat mission and how that corpus can be used to alleviate sir more than swachh bharat whatever money comes we should use it the first problem is ensure the sewage doesn't flow into lakes sewage is treated it is a health time bomb what can you have see you talk about swachh bharat you talk about smart cities smart cities is not about intel in the in, intel chips and cisco routers smart city is making whether life in the city is livable is it more comfortable to the average citizen is water supply better is public health better is air pollution better is traffic better this is what smart city is all about whatever we get money under those programs you use this for this purpose whatever money you get but the point i would like to say is it is not that money has not been got for example in jnurm you would have got about 4 5000 crores you know in the last 5 6 years what difference it has made to the life of citizens in bangalore i am not able to find out it's one question about I mean, when we talk about water system in a city or a state or electricity or land system, yes. we see a general, uh, I see at least a general overlap in the kind of issues that Correct. we have. Correct. Uh, uh, central to them is what we started talking about in the question answer session: is the centralization of political power, uh, lack of democratic uh, systems, and the corporate. Uh, Uh, political nexus lack of voice from the stakeholder from, from yes, the stakeholders yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and it's a systematic yeah. uh, ignorance of the of their voices and we take issues of uh, unaccounted water or unaccounted electricity right uh, if you look at land the centralization of land control in in karnataka what is the distribution of ownership of land as a post i mean between large farmers and small small and marginal farmers across the country yes, across sir. the country i don't have numbers for karnataka but across the country around 84% of farming families are uh, small, small and marginal, marginal farmers uh, and they hold uh, less than uh, i mean around 30% or something of the land uh, the problem then therefore becomes as to where this when we say okay you know educate the consumer or educate people right 
we have i mean as you pointed out we have we live in a place where i mean where we have a greater incidence of subsidies to the middle class and the be- the most beneficial the, the better off people yeah, yeah. there the better off people are having the the worse off people are paying far more for electricity as well uh, as, as has been established through several studies and also on water as you just mentioned uh, how much are engineering solutions uh, i mean how much can we engineer engineer around these very real social problems of 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 democratic uh, uh, laps or 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 corporate state control and all it was you have said engineering solutions i will slightly modify that to say technological solutions use of technology you see technology is a very powerful tool and i don't think we have adequately realized the pa- the power of technology i am the first person to say because technology is very accurate in things like measurement technology is very accurate facts cannot lie then if you take you see somebody the forest department may tell you that the forest cover of india is 33% but satellite imagery doesn't you know you, you know that these technological solutions are you know are very useful in bringing about accountability in bringing about awareness in alerting the fact that something needs to be done but both are important both are important in fact i i will go one step further for technology technology should also be used to reduce this citizens interface with parastatal organizations you, you, if you have to get your water connection why do you have to go to bwssb why do you have to file an application why do you have to go and stand in a queue why do you have to go and get a contractor which is licensed by bwssb can't they put that list that licensing system or that license contractors on their website will you not have a choice that you select you transact all this from the comfort of your house can you prevent this you know citizen uh, interface you know with the, the uh, government organization that is a very major thing technology is very useful in puncturing the tall claims of people etc because technology will measure what doesn't what is not measured doesn't get done this i am telling you after 40 years of experience in government so without technology we can ignore technology at our own peril but having said that along with technology what is policy all about policy is meant for the benefit of the people policy seeks to regulate the behavior of people what needs to be done to get people to behave in a certain fashion suppose if i say that uh, drive to the left keep to the left that policy is not for the vehicle the vehicle is a lifeless thing <laughs> it is for the driver because you are trying to regulate and there must be incentives namely if you drive for one year without any chalan uh, then you know if for, for for the next offense uh, you know you have you know got uh, you know you can get one one offense of some some such incentive see in india particularly where regulation is very you know, the enforcement of regulation is very poor in this incentivization how to convince people how to take action how to take advantage of collective action ward committees consultations slowly convince people those ward committee members act as ambassadors of bwssb rather than bwssb waging a lone battle these are issues which are very very simple see what is the norm pen experience you you look at the website it is not so yes law, in in norm pen uh, ek sun chan was very lucky their number 2 was a man called long nari he was a technical man and he was they were very lucky that he was trained in the erstwhile east germany in 1988 so they had a technically very competent man but that alone would not have solved the problem and whatever you would have done we know with regard to involving the public etc without adequate technical support and engineering solution that also would not have solved both are necessary i was just making to the conversation <coughs> the need for integrating technology and engineering solutions with the socially relevant so issue, issues issues uh, 
I, I, in, in my reading of the issue, I've realized that water itself or any natural resource which is deemed a public good uh, will typically have a lot of uh, sort of political configuration around it. Absolutely. And over the last 40 years, systematically, it's become this big and beautiful uh, sort of engineering solutions. And now, as your presentation also suggests, you're actually emphasizing the smallest. Small, group. decentralized, yes. But having had the institutional uh, thinking so revamped into considering only large sort of solutions, uh, I would think you would need a major radical push in okay. thinking along the okay. okay. And one of the things that I realized uh, recently when I went to Delhi was during the jack stir, they cut off the water supply to Delhi. Hmm. And when that happened, people got scared for the first time in almost 15 years. Hmm. And this is after the Tehri Dam, Renuka Dam mm -hmm. have all mm -hmm. given water mm -hmm. to Delhi. Sona water, Sonia Vihar so, water so has come in. Mm -hmm. And for the first time, people were actually scared. Mm -hmm. Now, isn't that the time for these institutional sort of things to start changing a little mm -hmm. bit? And how legal is that to do something like that? Uh, like for the study, I can only do some loud thinking along with you, you know, because there is, I, probably nobody in India has an answer to this, but we must, an answer must evolve. Uh, number one, my own thinking has been, it should be small, it should be decentralized, we should get away from our strange fascination for big and beautiful kind of thing, etc. That has led to huge waste. It is not only in India, in China, for example. Massive buildings, not occupied by anybody. Somehow, you know, world over, politicians and bureaucrats have a strange fascination for big things, etc. But, you should, what, in fact, a couple of months back, I had given a lecture on drip irrigation, which means that it is, it is a completely different model away from big dams, which takes 10 years to fructify. This huge amount of uh, submerged area, which you have to build uh, canals and you have to build laterals and you have to build field irrigation channels and train the farmer. It all takes time. The problem of oversupply and flooding and all that. But what I genuinely believe is, is in India, public debate is channeled by three or four institutions. It is channeled by, it is by think tanks. It is channeled by articles which appear in magazines like EPW and uh, newspapers, etc. It is taken up by the press and that has got a huge impact on legislation. It has got a huge impact on judicial proceedings, etc. For example, judicial proceedings, many times the judiciary has taken contrary positions in a period of 20 years or 25 years because that reflects the latest you know political thinking and the debate in the country and this is where i feel that a think tank has got this special responsibility you might feel are what do i but if you study this you write an article you convince people etc it may not happen in one year but sure enough the tide will turn Somebody has to take up that thing. See, because after studying it, etc., you will be able to speak with much greater conviction. Already, already, I feel, given the power of, uh, uh, you know, social media, given the power of uh, the television debates, given the power of its impact on the judiciary, judicial pronouncement, given the fact that intellectual and the thinking class are articulating issues, etc. These issues will definitely get articulated, etc. One other thing, sir, which also I think I should mention, when you talk about uh, how do you, you know, uh, factor in for the small and underdog and all that, one, one possible way is, just like water pricing, etc., you have a regulator for water. A regulator for water will give you several other options which the government of the day may not be able to explore. For example, let us say, you know, if you take BWSSB, you don't touch the tariff up to 8,000 kiloliters because that is the, what the poor people, that is what they draw. 
but you increase the tariff beyond 8000 you know 8000 liters etc you make it double what is your electricity bill and what is your water bill today in my house my water bill comes to around 250 or 260 rupees my electricity bill is approximately about 2000 etc therefore i can afford to pay instead of 200 250 i can afford to pay 400 but don't touch that will that will raise the money but in return i am assured of a better quality of water but we need to flag this issue of the poor the underdog etc 25 percent of india are, are what professor brahman says they are not destitute they are paupers you need to ensure that they are looked at and they are looked after and they are enabled to you know survive with a dignity and i think that is one of the jobs which people like you and me should do so incidentally you know mr tipeswami i i i tell you is uh, one of the most knowledgeable people on water you know possibly in bws has been the last 30 years when we talk about you know when i said capacity building one of the major problems in BWSSB is A, there are one or two people. It is completely driven by consultants. There is nobody to even raise a single question on a consultant's report. I remember when this OSED program, when the OSED report came during Mr. SMK's regime, and this was given to Tata Consultancy. And Tata Consultancy gave a, a well considered report. Mr. Tipeswami raised 43 objections or 43 observations the entire team of tata consultancy came down and it involved a tripartite discussions between bwssb led by mr tipeswami the indian institute of science and tcs <coughs> can you show me one other person in bwssb today who has got that kind of uh, you know technical competence that is where you know that is the challenge for example in 1974 when the karnataka power corporation was set up the then policy makers had the foresight that we must build up this kind of competence within the organization. So they hit upon a scheme. They said anybody who wants to do MTech or ME is given paid leave for two years. You go and come back and you don't, you don't execute a bond of more than two years. A lot of people did that and it is the organization which benefited. So you should seek to build up technical competence. There is nobody in BWSSB, to the best of my knowledge, who can challenge a consultant the way Mr. Tipeswami was doing. That, alas, is a vanishing breed. So are there any lessons from the Bangalore problem that uh, lend themselves to other cities like Mysore? Sir, if you are able to solve Bangalore, this will come up, you know, in some form or the other in all the other cities. That is why I mentioned about that urban, that national, you know, urban uh, UI, that, in, that initiative with regard to peer experience and fifth technical learning that is available in the uh, in internet. You know, you can access that. They have given studies about, you know, what has been done in Nagpur, PPPs. They have done what has been done in Surat with regard to the setting up of this uh, this uh, uh, this uh, uh, non-revenue water cell. What has been done in Pimpri Chinfat, that is with regard to benchmarking, uh, uh, you know, uh, service uh, standards. What has been done in uh, in Bangalore itself with regard to bulk metering in 2006-13, they did that. What has been done for environment in Pimpri Chinfat, etc. What has been done in Jalandhar with regard to uh, sewerage? What has been done in Trichy, you know, with regard to these community managed toilets? <coughs> These same lessons can be taken lock, stock and barrel. If you succeed in Bangalore, you will succeed anywhere in urban Karnataka and those lessons may be available elsewhere. You should also look for what has been the Indian experience elsewhere. That is why I gave these examples. You know, the other things, you know, for example, financing. What has been done in Tamil Nadu, Pallavaram? What has been done in, in Nagpur itself? Uh, energy audit and water audit, etc. Uh, so, this has got this unaccounted for water, reducing waste, reuse of water, etc. 
they have got things which will benefit the entire urban sector and urbanization you know today uh, karnataka is around 38% tamil nadu and all that are you know more than 40% and they will be around 11 10 or 11 states by 2020 they'll touch 50% given the kind of you know stress which the uh, agrarian economy is undergoing etc this urbanization is bound to take place and other thing is what we should realize is the urban poor have not only needs but aspirations we should uh, try to cater to their aspirations we try to say it's okay he will or she will make do with some 100 lpcd that is not the answer but i think you know in this my my conviction a think tank such as cstep has got a huge responsibility you articulate issues you get people converted to some of these points you raise issues for the underdog which nobody else raises you are you analyze things on a multi dimensional manner you know because the what you analyze is multi dimensional a policy maker you know sitting let us say in vidhan sauda or bw ssb they are limited options they don't have time to reflect they are fighting from one uh, you know fight uh, emergency to another emergency and there are other problems etc so uh, issues of accountability issues of efficiency issues of benchmarking issues of community involvement issues of service to the poor the bottom 25% are we doing something for them can we make water available to them more water at the same price i think what you are doing in urbanization and i selected this as a first topic because you are already working on urbanization i have somehow i feel this darpan and all these things will enable them to manage some of these sewage projects and all much more efficiently much more efficiently no other organization other than c step will have this sort of multi dimensional background because you are you have got technology you have got engineering you have got uh, uh, you know economics uh, behavior economics sociology uh, urban studies there are several things you know managerial issues financial uh, you know management <coughs> i didn't mention about financial management you take the financial ratios of nompen ppwsa uh, nompen it it is something like one of your ipos when you go to dalal street they are contributing 30% of their revenue to the central government and they have gone they have gone in for public issue in 2007 and this is in nompen in bangalore we are not even struggling with 43% Shame on us! I don't know whether I answered your point, but <laughs> I think I will come back to you with it later. Uh, okay. Okay. Because on the legality of doing something radically different. No, no. Le- le- you see, legality is you can always pass a legislation. The legislation can only be struck down in a court of law. provided it infringes upon fundamental rights if it does not infringe upon fundamental rights and if it does not infringe with the dictates of common law that is principles of natural justice you don't take action against somebody without hearing that person you issue a notice rest of see tomorrow let us say the policy makers can decide we are going to sell vidhan sabha no issue all that they required to do is to bring in a legislation anything is possible with legislation with these two caveats and also so far as the second caveat is concerned legal in, in, intervention etc my own experience tells me when it is in public interest you know it is manifest it comes out very transparently the judiciary in 99 out of 100 cases will tend to support yes sir
It is not merely a planning solution. It is how you execute the plan. Sure. Uh, Who is executing the plan? Right. What are the chances of success? Is that being measured? Is that being att- attempted within the timelines? Are you going to have time and cost overruns which are unacceptable? And benchmark yourself against it because if you have got time and cost overruns, the ultimate, you know, the the rate at which water is supplied to the citizen, in, you know, increases. And therefore, there should be need for an independent regulatory authority and all that. The citizen must be the arbiter if he or she is getting water at a reasonable rate. Sure. So I think uh, I was coming more from the point of view of uh, the starting point into planning. So okay. there is a demand and there is a supply. Okay. Okay. In Indian context, I mentioned about China, you know, you cannot bring in any, you cannot say that a city cannot grow. But in practice, there is a tipping point. Now, my own feeling is Bangalore today is 10 plus 2. With this broad gauging of this Bangalore-Mysore line, more people, people, some 4 to 5 lakh people will shift out of Bangalore and settle in between and keep shuttling like what they do between Pune and uh, Mumbai, etc. So, there is a tipping point. It, does, it is not that I don't agree with this ex, uh, with this analyst saying that uh, Bangalore will have 30 million by 2030 because there is a limit to which the city can grow. What that tipping point is and how do you regulate it? How can you bring about painlessly? How do you incentivize people? Can you incentivize people to move out of Bangalore? If I am paying 10,000 rupee rent, if I am getting able to get a house in Mysore for 2,000 rupees or 3,000 rupees, I am prepared to move to Mysore provided I get a train every 15 minutes. So, if you put a train every 15 minutes, you are incentivizing people to go out. These sort of incentives are very, very important. 